Hey, did you just get a 3D printer? Oh boy, you are in for a world of fun. I'm so happy for you. You know though, there are some things that you're gonna need, things that probably didn't come in the box, but don't worry about it, I got you covered. Welcome to the workbench. Let's get you a list of things that you're going to need as a 3D printer owner. So the first thing you're gonna need is a way to remove the prints off the print bed. And there's lots of different choices you can use for this. A little putty knife like this is an excellent way to do it. If it's got a thin enough blade, you just work your way under there. I find though that this sometimes has a problem with prints that have sloping edges into the end. So this isn't one of my favorite ways to do it, but I know a lot of people who love this. So I'll just let you know that's a possibility. My personal favorite is using one of these five-in-one painter's tools. They've got a really hard surface and a really sharp edge, and I've actually gone and sharpened it even more. All you do is just put that at the base of your print, tap it with the hammer, little four-ounce hammer. This is just one that I got for my kids, but it works great for doing this. Tap it, and usually the print pops right off. If not, you just got to tap it a couple of times. Another great method is one of these little razors on a on a uh well it's a printed razor holder and it's actually angled so that it puts the razor right down into the print now the funny thing about this one is it's a 3d printed tool you just add razor and go and the link will be wherever links are found but the question is how are you going to get this one off the print bed tools i mean if you're like me you didn't get your 3d printer so that you could tinker with it you got it so that you could make cool stuff but even I need to occasionally take my printer apart and make sure that it's working. If your 3D printer uses these little hex bolts, you're going to want to have a set of these little hex wrenches. Now, these came with my 3D printer. Maybe they came with yours, but if your 3D printer has these hex wrenches in them and they didn't come with a set of them, you really should get them. Also, if you've got a small Phillips or flathead screwdriver, this one's reversible for both of them, and your 3D printer has those screws in it, you're going to want to have one of these. A little safety blade is fantastic for cleaning up prints and making your prints look as good as possible. And having a pair of cutters is fantastic, uh, mandatory, I feel. Because when you pull filament out of the 3D printer, it's got this kind of pointy edge on it, and you just want to clip that off. That flat edge will feed in back into the 3D printer so much easier. You know, for handling hot plastic, Nothing is better than a pair of needle nose pliers. These needle nose pliers also have a pair of little clippers on them So maybe these would be enough, but they come in a set and so I've got them both These little hex socket wrenches get a metric set of hex socket wrenches because At some point you are going to need to replace the nozzle on your 3d printer It's going to clog and this is the best way to remove that nozzle and put it back on. And what are you gonna use those tools for? Well, to install spare parts. So have those spare parts on hand. Like I said, the most common spare part that you're going to need is new nozzles. Also, if your 3D printer uses these liner tubes, make sure you have some of them on hand. They are basically your consumable. You're going to run through a lot of these, especially in your first couple of months when you don't know what you're doing. Eventually, you'll stop using them as much, but you'll still want to have a couple on hand because, trust me, the day that you need it, you're going to be so frustrated because it'll be in the middle of a big job, something that you want to do. Just, just, just have some spare parts on hand. Pen and paper. You're going to want to take notes. You're going to want to take notes on how hot you're trying your filament, how uh, fast you're running your filament. You're going to want to take notes on what works, what doesn't. Every time you change something, every time you try something, write it down. Especially in these sometimes frustrating first months and weeks of 3D printing, you'll want to take some notes. Next on this list is a community. Yeah, I know, okay, I know it's not a thing, but trust me, this is almost as important or more important than any of the other things on the list. You want to go to groups.google.com and search for the 3D printer tips and tricks group and join that today. Have them email you every day because these people on that group are brilliant. They're geniuses. I've learned everything I've known from this community and group. Many of the tips in this video came from that group. 
And then search for the community and group for your 3D printer. Search for the brand and join that group. Again, a wealth of information. The 3D printer tips and tricks group, great for general information about 3D printing. The one about your 3D printer, you can go there and find out critical upgrades that you might need to do, critical tips and tricks. You know, it might be a bit obvious, but you might also want something to print. And, you know, the world has plenty of, of 20 millimeter calibration cubes. The best place to find 3D prints is at yegi.com, which is a search engine that searches all the 3D print repositories. But you can find small prints to print that are cute and fun, possibly even functional in other ways, like, uh, say these Lovecraft inspired pawns that are cute and lovable. I mean, just just look at that little soul eating face. He's adorable and it's a tiny little print. You can print these off and test your settings, make sure everything is the way that you like it and make sure everything looks good. The layers are bonding and it looks all right. And then when you're all done, You've got something that you can just throw away generic pawns and use these instead. Don't just print generic calibration cubes. Go get yourself something cool to print. Thanks, Simon. You're going to want to have a magnifying glass or loop or something that you can look closer at your 3D prints. Really get a sense for how they're working. And uh, to that end, a, a little flashlight helps too. This is just a dollar store one, but you can get one that's nicer. The point is something that you can take a closer look at your 3D prints with. No matter what material you're using, super glue will bond them together. And so I like to keep that on hand. For one of these hot glue guns, I mean, honestly, if you don't have one of these on hand, I, I don't know, you just should have one of these. They're just marvelously useful for all sorts of wonderful projects, but they also help for 3D prints too, because they're a nice hot tip, which you can use as you're gluing things to fix prints. Calipers. The digital ones really are the ones that you want. You can have these manual ones. They function, especially if you're clever, but I'll tell you the truth. I keep them around just for illustrative purposes. The digital ones I use all the time. You need to be able to measure your prints to tell if they printed exactly the way that you're supposed to. You also need to use them to measure things in real life when you're doing design work. And, uh, you know, while we're at it, why not a, a subscription to a good YouTube channel that has tips and tricks and uh, tutorials on, on how to design cool things for 3D prints and, and cool 3D print projects. I, I, you know, just, you know, hit that subscribe button. Yeah, whenever you want. Now, that's it for the critical things, the things that you need if you just want to make sure your 3D printer keeps running. But if you want to go deeper, if you want to be one of the tinkers who take apart your 3D printer and put it back together, there are other things you're going to want to have, like a soldering iron or wire stripper. If you're going to be printing an ABS, you're going to want to have some acetone around and some paper towels for putting that acetone, smoothing your prints, gluing prints together. Acetone is your tool for that, so make sure you get a bottle of it. It's cheap, it's easy to find anywhere. Now, if all you're going to be doing is PLA, you can skip this step because there's no chemical that smooths or bonds PLA. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something. And if you or somebody you know has a 3D printer or gets a 3D printer, please share this video with them. Also, did I forget something? Go ahead and put in the comments if I forgot something that you found that is critical to keeping your 3D printer running or even just a good idea. And I hope to see you next time at the workbench. Thank you so much for watching. I mean, honestly, if you don't have one of these hot glue guns, oh, Simon. Are we getting my head? You look like you look too low. Are you looking at me?